Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for taking time out of a pretty busy time of the year, um, and uh, especially going into this this upcoming school year uh, for today's webinar. Um, if you were here earlier, we kind of focused uh, on Tuesday on creating and, and, and sharing primary source sets. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit analogous to that. Um, we're going to be looking, instead of on the, the document side of the website, we're going to be looking more on the activity side of the website and how to create and share classrooms of activities, um, the different types of activities that exist in Docs Teach. Um, how they work in, in general ways and what kind of ways you can pair them um, to have, you know, some activities you might do within a, a Zoom or a Google Meet call and others that you might have a, as an assignment that students would do in between those. Um, and um, all, all these things and more. Um, for most of what I'm going to be sharing today, you do have to have, uh, as a teacher, an account at Docs Teach, which is free. Um, to be able to create a classroom, to be able to share activities uh, with your students that either you've created or other people have created. Um, you'll, you'll need an account for that. Your students, to be able to access what you've created for them, will not need that. So um, just to kind of keep that in mind. So I think we're going to get started. Um, so um, before we get into kind of creating and searching for classrooms, I want to give you a sense of where they exist on the website for you. So right now I am logged into my account. And if I click on menu, my account, and go to my activities, um, it'll bring up a page here that lists out all the different classrooms that I have. Um, a default classroom, which is if you are creating activities or um, starring ones or finding other ones that you, you want to be able to modify later. They kind of automatically live in default unless you pick a spot for it to go. Um, and then I've created some special ones. I gave U.S. History 1, U.S. History 2, and Civics titles. Um, and then I just have tons of other classrooms, which you as a, as a teacher user would probably not have as many. Um, um, who knows? Um, but these all live under you know, when you're logged into your account under my account, my activities. Um, and you could do things, I'll show you how to do things um, moving around and titling stuff um, in a second. But it's just a way that you can organize, kind of curate activities that you're finding, um, activities that you're creating yourself, that you're modifying from other teachers. Um, and it makes it easier if you want to be able to share a particular unit, a particular uh, um, topic with your students um, virtually or in you know face to face um, a good way to be able to organize all that information um, but I'm going to show you how to kind of make these classrooms um, or add different documents add different activities to it rather by going to our activity page so for me from any page if you click on menu activities it brings up our activity uh, search page and this is where you can search for um, different activities uh, by topic area. Um, there are also historical eras, grade level, thinking skill and activity areas where you can filter those results by. Um, but if you type in a key, if you type in a key term like suffrage, you can see that 50 activities will show up. Now the first, uh, bunch are all things that are created by National Archives educators, but you can see by the time you get to the end, we're seeing uh, teacher-created activities on this first page as well. Um, if you wanted to focus by time period, um, you can do that to kind of filter those results down a little bit. So we've gone from 50 to 34. If you were looking for like a middle school activity, it brings it down to 10. Um, though I do say whenever we recommend, you know, teachers using the site, you're looking for a middle school activity, it always makes sense to kind of look at upper elementary or high school as well. Um, and um, you can focus on thinking skill or even type of activity that um, exists here. Uh, I'm going to pick one of these, um, this suffrage photograph analysis activity. This is the teacher page for it. 
And um, when you're on this page, A, you can see who created the activity, what era, what skills it focuses on, what grade level, grade level we um, organize this activity for, and then a full kind of array of um, teacher instructions to do it. Um, but when you're on this page, up here near the top, there's a printer icon, a copy icon, and a star icon. The copy and the star are uh, helpful if you're going to want to be able to organize this actual activity into um, a classroom that you've created that you want to be able to share with your students. If you want to share just this individual activity, you can always just share the URL with them. Or if you use Google Classroom, you can click on the Google Classroom icon to share it that way. But I uh, want to give you another tool to kind of put together, pair activities that relate to each other, um, be able to share things with your students that way. So uh, the big difference between the star and the copy is the copy is you're literally making a duplicate of this activity that you may intend to modify in some way and make some changes to the questions, maybe things that make more sense to you and your students. Um, and the star is literally just bookmarking this actual activity that somebody else has created that you want to be able to use uh, without making any changes um, to your students. But the, the adding function is basically the same. So I'm going to add this to my US History 2 classroom. And when you do that, it kind of goes straight back to your My Activity page. Just for fun, I'll also copy it to that same one so you can see how different that looks. Again, copying makes a duplicate of this activity that then you can modify and tailor to your students. Maybe if you are teaching middle school and you think that um, some of the questions aren't age appropriate, you can always change that there. So I've added this into my classroom. I put them both in my uh, US History 2 folder. Um, you can see here that uh, the one that I've copied has the word copy next to it, and it's not published. That's what that little red strike means. Um, but uh, if I wanted to go into it, we won't do that today. But if I wanted to uh, modify it, make it make more sense for my students, I could do that there. Um, versus the one that's, that's copied, that is published, is here. Um, I can always, this is actually an activity that I made, so I can edit and manage it. Uh, but if you look at the other activities in this folder, you don't see that little button next to it. That's how, if you if you had found this activity, how it would look on your screen. Um, but here's my US History 2 folder. I gave it that title. Um, if I wanted to change that title to something else, you know, US History 2 suffrage unit and you have your suffrage activities there. I could rename it. Um, and then this little link icon right next to it has two sets of links, or actually kind of three. Um, if you were sharing this with um, other teachers in your department um, that were doing similar, you know, if you're kind of sharing resources together and you want your teachers to be able to see the full teacher instructions, you can always share that link with them. Um, but it also gives a link that you would share directly with your students. And as a student, what they would see would be this page here. Um, they would not, again, need to have an account to be able to access the, the, the classroom of activities you're sharing with them. Um, and what this does, it brings them, when they click on the link, it brings them straight into the activity itself that you're creating. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of walk through this in a second uh, to give you a sense of how um, students do the activities, how they can turn in responses to you, um, how it makes sense in this new environment as well. Uh, but I'm going to go back to the classroom here. So um, I've retitled it. Um, you can very easily, if you found um, an activity like here, I've created, but not fully created, an activity myself about suffrage. It still hasn't been published yet, but if I want to move that into, from my default classroom into this new US suffrage classroom, I can take it, click move them to, 
U.S. History to Suffrage Unit, when I click Go, you can take an activity that you've put in default, that you've made yourself, that maybe you had in another folder, you could take it and move it here. Um, and uh, you can see my suffrage activity draft is here that I've been working on. Um, if you want to make a new folder that's all the way at the bottom of this page, you can create a new folder. I spell things wrong like I do. I'm giving a presentation. Um, so you see my new activities folder is here now. I can move things here. I can create an activity and publish it there um, and just kind of help organize either the activities that I'm finding that other people have created or my own activities that I have made, OK? Um, so that's a little bit about uh, you know, creating classrooms, organizing your activities into classrooms, how to share it, et cetera. Um, I should mention, when you share a folder, if I click on the student page again, and I have this, this list of um, activities, you can give this link directly to your students. You can input this link in a learning management system that you have. Um, or if you want to be able to share this entire folder in a Google Classroom, you can click on that link and be able to share it that way as well. OK? Um, <clears throat> so you know, these are the types of, of ways you can kind of start organizing things that you're finding. Um, you know, we have literally hundreds of activities that the National Archives has created and um, thousands of activities that teachers have created all across the country on a wide variety of different topics. Um, the activities come in kind of different uh, formats, just to kind of give you a, a quick sense of what this is. And we've talked about this on previous webinars, and we'll look at this uh, in the future as well. Um, but uh, we have activities that really focus on analysis skills. We have a series of activities under this umbrella term focusing on details, uh, discussion topics, spotlight, zoom crop, compare and contrast, white out, blackout, which are great if you're trying to do a conversation starter, if you're trying to you know, teach a, a short analysis activity via um, you know, distance learning using Zoom or Google Meet or whatever your, your school is doing. These all involve just one or maybe at most two primary source documents. And depending on which ones you choose, if they're photographs like we saw, they might really work in that setting. Um, and then we have other activities which, you know, if you're doing more of a blended learning situation this year or a hybrid of some kind, if there are times where students are doing, you know, asynchronous learning, you can assign an activity like a finding a sequence activity or a making connections activity. Uh, these require a little bit more um, analysis and contextualization. These might be things that you would review in the next time you had a um, in-person class meeting or a Zoom, Google Meet uh, situation. But since it involves a lot of heavy analysis and some um, a little bit more time, this might be something that students are working on, kind of in between those different meetings, um, seeing the big picture, weighing the evidence. They all kind of focus on you know different historical skills that we want our students to really um, get better at. Um, but I, I want to kind of go back to kind of very uh, briefly kind of walk you through, give you a sense of how these activities might work in uh, the situation you're in. So I'm going to look for um, an activity, Mrs. Bloomer's Political Disability. This uses a tool focusing on details discussion topic. Uh, this is the teacher page for it. If I liked it, I could copy it to modify it or star it if I really wanted to keep it in my folder. It already is in one of the folders I created. And here are all the teacher instructions um, as well. But uh, if you want to see how it looks for a student who's doing the actual activity, when they get the link, however you share it with them, they would see this page, you know, carefully read this letter to the US Congress written by Miss Amelia Bloomer, pay attention to the argument she constructs and consider what she's asking for. After you've read the letter, answer the discussion questions provided below. So if you were doing this in, you know, um, 
a virtual setting, you can you know zoom in on the letter, show parts of it. You know, have students really focus. There's some discussion questions here below, which you could provide to them. Um, you know, why is she writing this letter to Congress? What evidence does she provide to support her argument? Um, if we clicked on view entire document, it would give us a transcript of it, which we could share as well. Um, but then if you want your students maybe individually to you know, share a response with you, um, they can click on when you're done. There's a follow-up question there that says, imagine you are U.S. government in 1878. How would you answer Ms. Bloom's letter, write her response? Uh, your students would write their name. They would put in the email address that you have um, connected to your account. Um, you can actually set up different classrooms within DocsTeach if you want to be able to organize how you receive the information you're getting. And then the students would give their well thought out response. Um, and when they click on send response, since they have your name, your email address here, um, the their um, answer goes straight to your account um, within DocsTeach. If you want it, they can actually even turn this response in via Google Classroom by clicking on that icon and then just kind of putting this unique URL in as their submission uh, for doing that activity. Uh, but within Docs Teach itself, if you don't have um, a learning management system, under, um, sorry, I gotta get off this page. Under menu, my account, and my student responses, you'll see um, a list of the different responses that have been turned in. Um, you could filter by different group. If you want to look at just you know US history too, you can see just that class that's turned it in. Um, and when you click on the link, it brings up the page that we were just looking at, except now it has their response written there. Um, this is how it would look too. I mean, you would literally, um, if they're turning in via Google Classroom or another process, you'd get this link and you'd be brought to this page showing their full response. Uh, but it also can be managed within Docs Teach itself. Um, so this is a type of activity, again, it only uses one primary source. There's you know some discussion questions there that they can you know talk about as one group. Um, it might work in that type of setting. Um, to show you a little bit of a longer activity, one that you might have your students do between visits, or if you're doing some asynchronous um, learning. I'm gonna go into my classroom page and look at this extending suffrage to women activity. Um, this one uses a tool called Finding a Sequence, which asks students to place uh, primary sources in the correct chronological order. And uh, there's an array of documents along the top here. There's spots where they end up having to go. Um, and when they click on the little orange icon in the corner, it brings up the document. They look at it. In this case, they both have to kind of read it, look for you know, understand what the document is telling, what it's about, but also pay attention to details like the date of the document to be able to place it in the correct chronological order. And depending if they place it in the right spot, it kind of locks in place there. Um, once they complete the entire activity, just like before, there's a question, um, um, what were the various tools and techniques that women use, women and men use to fight for the right to vote? And they can put in their name. Or email address. Um, pick the class. Give a great list of tools and techniques. And just like before, if they completed it, um, It'll be sent. They can share that link via Google Classroom, or if you're using all of Docs Teach within it, if you're using all the things that Docs Teach can do, you'll see the activity I created here. You'll see in this case too that you know great list of tools and techniques. But you can see since I only put one document in place, you see how they actually, um, if they actually complete the full activity. 
Okay, so this is, again, this type of activity, and a lot of the ones along um, this list here of activity tools, where we list out all the different tools we have. Um, the analyzing documents focusing on details are short to the point, only involve one document or two at most. And the ones finding a sequence, mapping history, weighing the evidence, et cetera, are ones that involve a little bit more analysis, ones that students would probably have to do between class sessions or if you're doing something asynchronous, if you're assigning an activity for students to do. Uh, but you can see how you can pair them up. If you're starting a unit, you can start with a letter like the one we just saw with from Amelia Bloomer. Um, it's a quick, short activity. It gives them a, a, a way to practice some of the skills that they'll be able to then apply in the longer activity um, of looking for purpose and dates and other types of important details. Um, I see that I'm a little bit over for time already, so I think I'm, I'm going to start uh, uh, wrapping up. I hope this this made sense um, and give an idea of how Ondoxy is not going to only organize primary source sets, but you can organize activities that other teachers have created, that the National Archives educators have created, or even activities that you yourself have created um, into classrooms and how you can share those classrooms with your students and how they can then start um, completing activities.